So as far as where we left off with your character at the end of season two and where he's going to be in season three, yeah. once you, to point a dark Vader phrase, sort of entered the dark side, yeah. can you bounce back from that or is that where he is from now on? That's our journey, I think. I think that's the, the season-long arc uh, is, is whether Mike can, can pull back from you know, the, the truly awful things that have happened to him uh, and his family. Um, but that's where we began. Um, at the beginning of the season, uh, Mike is fully hunting down Mark Ray. That is his focus. He wants to. He wants to kill Mark. It's not even a secret. You know, um, uh, he is looking and, and is out for blood. Um, so now, whether the only thing that will satiate that is his death, or whether something will happen where he's captured and Mike, uh, Mike can maybe move on, I don't know yet. Um, but I think that is our our journey for Mike this year, is to, to sort of walk that line. And we've seen it with Ryan, and, and, and we've also seen that, especially in season three, that he has started to pull back. He has closed some of the chapters, with Joe Carroll being captured, he has allowed himself a life. He's allowed himself to move on. And so I think the hope is always there. Now, whether whether that actually happens or not is, is yet to be seen, but uh, it's interesting exploring that. So the irony is that Ryan kept saying, I don't want you to become me. Which and ultimately they have. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, I think it's understandable. I think there's always that risk that when you put yourself in these circumstances, you'd have to be a saint not to follow that path, you know, and, uh, and Mike certainly is not that. He's a, he's a, a, a real man that, that struggles with, um, with the decisions he's made um, and also the, the tragedy that's happened to him. There seemed to also be a spark with Ryan's niece. Oh, yeah, there was. Is that, uh, that going to continue that? a little bit? Um, yeah, well, I, I think one of the great things about last year is that there was that, that hope. For, for Mike and Max, there's some romance, and, and it was a season-long thing. You know, we built up to a kiss in the last episode, and people uh, between seasons were like, "So what's going to happen?" You know, and I, I, in the back of my head, I was like, "You know, I don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not going to see them like going out for burgers or going on dates. You know, it's just not that kind of show." And it turns out I was right. What you know, we pick up, we pick up a year after, approximately after those events, and um, in the interim, Mike has decided to lead a task force in, in Europe and in South America that is hunting down the, the Gray fortune. Uh, you know, Lily Gray was a billionaire, and, and that's what really allowed this um, family to, to evade the law for so long. And with Mark being the last one that's left, uh, Mike goes on this crusade essentially to, to, to hunt down all their financials and, and shut them down in hopes that it will flush Mark out. That being said, he had to make a decision to leave Max, and, and we see the scene, we see a flashback between the two where, where Mike has to make that decision. So when, when Mike steps back into this world and is brought back into, into uh, back to the FBI in New York, she's moved on. You know, she has a boyfriend, and uh, there's still definitely feelings for each other, um, but it's, Mike has to, to deal and live with um, the decisions he's made, and he doesn't necessarily like it. What makes it even tougher is Tom, the character that, that Max is dating, and she actually works in the FBI as well, so it's sort of like salt in the wound. So he's got to really learn to, to handle, uh, you know, the situation. So, but uh, you know, there's definitely still feelings between each other. So I think there's, you know, uh, interesting paths that can go.